We are very, very happy to have Mr. Tom York from Radiohead here in the stupid studio. Also, Tony Juniper, eco hero extraordinaire. Uh, Tom, what are you doing here? I don't know. What am I doing here? Um, uh, I've come for a glimmer of hope. I was reading lots of blogs about it. Um, uh, and all the, I just thought there's got to be something going on. There's, you know, um, uh, I knew that Tony was coming. Um, and he could blag me in, <laughs> couldn't he, Tony? I see you've got a press pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Professional journalist, um, are you? Uh, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Actually, it was a bit tricky at the door, anyway. Have you um, found any glimmers of hope? Um, maybe. Would you like to share Yeah, I, well, I think, I think the difference maybe now, I mean, I wasn't at Rio, obviously. Um, but uh, I think maybe now the political pressure is different. I mean, well, judging by, um, we sat in on a, a briefing that Ed Miliband was doing, and um, he's definitely feeling the heat. Yeah. And he's not the only one. The Amer even the Americans are feeling the heat, even though they're not bringing much to the table. Um, that's the difference. Um, and whether that actually means that we get exactly what we need right now, okay, maybe not, you know. I mean, this, this is all sort of, you know, it sounds all horribly familiar. It sounds like a G8 summit, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone go, everybody leaves waving a piece of paper going, yeah, it's pretty much there, yep, 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 yep. And then it unravels completely. Uh, hopefully that's not going to be the situation here. I, I kind of think, um, I guess logistically it's probably a, a massive nightmare, but the basic principles are there, and it seems that, you know, uh, at least, of course, they've knocked all the NGOs out now, but um, the, yeah. that, that level of pressure they've yeah. never had before, I don't think, yeah. politically anywhere. Like, it's not just in, in the West either. So, like, with China's a really interesting thing. I mean, they're really like, they need this to happen, you know, because they're feeling the effects of climate change. So. But obviously, we've known about this problem, and the politicians have known about this problem 30, 40 years. Yep. And uh, fail to act, basically. Ah, yes, but and you see, for, 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 uh, to quote George Monbiot, yeah. um, for a good many of those years, um, you and I have been bombarded with the naysayers yeah. and the, 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 in the professional den denial industry. Well, indeed, we still are. Uh, you are, but they're <laughs> fucked. This is their last stand. The Battle of the Bulge, yeah. I, I, I wrote something yesterday um, describing this as the Battle of the Bulge for the climate change deniers. Meaning what? Where they have an impressive counterattack on, on what is a mainstream inevitability, uh, but it's crushed very quickly and crumbles and has to succumb to the overwhelming weight of evidence which is out there from the scientific community. Well, we say that, but yet, um, you know, yeah. our film The Age of Stupid was screened on the BBC earlier this week, and then they had a debate following it. We're going to see a clip in a minute. Um, where they were saying um, yeah. that you know it's still open. The yeah. BBC have this hang up yeah. about it, being the, impartial. Uh, when we when we launched yeah. the Friends of the Earth, when we launched the the climate um, bill campaign yeah. with Friends of the Earth, we were we were literally competing with these people. You know that every time but we went going on, on. That yeah, was no, I know, I know. Years ago. But yeah, honestly, this is some on, weird BBC yeah. statute hang up thing. Yeah. Ignore them, all right? They're a bunch yeah. of we monkeys. We can't ignore them. They're so the public service broadcaster. But, this, uh, yeah. but yeah. that's the whole point. Power. The public service yeah. broadcasting. They've got some hang up in their yeah. remit about yeah. trying to be balanced. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to know yeah. these fucking monkeys are being paid by the oil yeah. companies. No one wants to know. Yeah. You know, everybody would like to feel this is going away. Mm. You know, it, this. Everyone would like to feel better about it, but it's not going away. The BBC have just got some blind spot. Just yeah. ignore it. Yeah. I think they've got some editors who, who, who that's possibly... That's what I'm saying. They're, they're probably aren't up, the they aren't up to the job. Uh, you know, I, I, I got a call the other evening from Radio 5 Live and invited to go on and, and, and debate with some climate change denier. And I said, you know, what is the credentials of this person? You know, yeah. are they a climate change scientist with some track record? And the woman said, well, he was on Sky TV this morning. <laughs> this was his qualifications. Research done. Research done. Exactly. Qualifications to get on... the postman. <laughs> it's quite incredible. But I, I, I do think, you know, that, that the, this balance thing, which there are obsessed by and trying to put both sides of the argument yeah. I said to her you know would you have somebody on who would say it's good to smoke tobacco because it's not bad for your health or you know some well, of the Peter worst Falls, excessive you know, they're not that bad. Exactly. <laughs> because there are two sides to every argument but some arguments you don't put the other side because it's socially damaging but also, and on this one, it couldn't be one if there's 99 scientists on one side and one on yeah, the other know, then exactly. have balance you'd have yeah. 99 times yeah. more of that exactly. side than the one not one for exactly me. indeed okay. that's another good point you just yeah. gotta you yeah. just gotta 
Ignore Try the BBC. Ignore the motherfuckers. <laughs> well, Sorry. I think maybe, maybe, maybe it's time to have a campaign on the BBC think... to, to put together a proper. What about a proper legal argument linked to the statutes of the BBC, where we could put together a complaint um, about the amount of airtime? You know, and you know who'd be in, and you know who'd be up for it, don't you? Who's Ed that? Miliband. Ed would he be up for it. He can't stand it. No. He's driving him <laughs> yeah. as much. You know, the government, it honestly, no, the, yeah. the government hate it as much as we do. That's a good point, actually. So anybody out there listening who's got the skills to construct such a complaint, I you were going to do it, working very going. much with the um, working uh, very much with the BBC. Statutes. Have a look at the BBC statutes out there, people in the world with an internet connection right there. See if it says something that we can use to make a formal complaint to the Board of Trustees of the BBC. It's a bit of homework for you. As to why they did change. Yeah, it could be my, my little girl watching, Maddie. Do you fancy having a go at that? I was thinking more of a lawyer than your little girl. <laughs> yeah, well, she's, she's clever. <laughs> we're going to come back to this. <laughs> but, but, but first, we're going to um, have a video of George Monbiot talking about exactly all these issues. So we're not saying that all the mainstream media has completely failed, uh, mm. just most of them, <laughs> most of the time. Um, but out of the ashes, I think, um, you know, a lot of new media are now taking over. I mean, the fact that, uh, can we have a shot of this lot by any chance? The fact that we are speaking live, uh, basically with two very cheap handy cams, four laptops and five people, none of whom have ever made a live TV show and have got the faintest idea what they're doing, but we're able, basically for no, almost no money, sponsored by a few supporters, um, go live globally with absolutely no restrictions. There's no lawyers telling us we can't swear. Fuck, 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 Bollocks. fuck. <laughs> Sorry. No, Sorry. no, no. There's, Sorry. no. there's no editorial <laughs> policy here. We can really say whatever we want. So I do think that even Good. though the mainstream media has failed on climate change, um, new, thing might. <laughs> <laughs> new things are happening. And uh, Tom, you're sitting right here, um, has a great example, perhaps not on climate change, but uh, tell us about what you did with your album. Uh, and why you did it? Why did we do it? Well, what did you do? We 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 said, um, give us what you think it's worth. Something like that. To your punters. Yes. Download it. Pay Download whatever you want. Download it. Pay 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 what you see fit. Yeah. And how did um, it go? Uh, we got more money than we had done from the last few, few really? records from me and Is that right? Because it all went 100% to you. No cut to the. Yeah. No nothing. Um, and. Uh, it was a spectacular success because it was like a big stink bomb to the industry, yeah. who, who still kind of don't like us very much. But um, and why did you do that? Why did we do that? Um, we were out of contract. Yeah. With, with we had a six-album contract with a EMI, which was at the time dying on its feet. Well, just about to. Um, and uh, we wanted to get out, and we wanted to get out in style. <laughs> um, and you most certainly did. Yeah, and it was really good fun. It was, it was one of, it's a bit like with this really. It was um, when you did your film. It's like the week we put it out was the most exciting week of my yeah, life yeah, yeah. because none of us knew what would happen, <coughs> and we were basically relying on people's goodwill, yeah. and that was it. <laughs> uh, and the fact, you know, that we had all these people that wanted to know what we were doing and it was they were just sort of it was the satisfaction of like you know putting two lines on your on your own website saying we've done it it's here <laughs> you know and then as opposed <laughs> to going through months of court yeah oh yeah and, so, and, 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 and giving it to all these people to decide what they think of it yeah, and yeah. right there and um, lawyers and all that shit presumably uh, um, yeah well that sort of yeah. you know vibe um yes <laughs> deliver the video up front two yeah. months to MTV and <laughs> none of that. So you just chucked it up on your website? It's Brilliant. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> and thanks for the link to our film because that is a little bit similar. I'm just going to grab Lizzie who's currently directing this live TV show, but who's the producer of The Age of Stupid. <laughs> um, I don't want to blow our own trumpets too much, but uh, say about how we distributed our film and funded it in a similar way to Tom and Radiohead, but on a much smaller scale. <laughs> Well, you've kind of said it all for me. Great, off you go. Uh, we um, raised all the money to make our film from people who care about climate change, so we raised half a million pounds, actually, um, from normal people. We've got 350 investors who bought shares in the film, and they own a percentage of the profits. But the, the main point being that we, uh, <laughs> we own the rights. There's no lawyers, there's no editorial policy. We can say whatever we want. We distribute it, and then all the money gets split between the people who made it, not some middlemen, not some corporate record company or what have you. And we've raised also another £350,000 to promote and distribute it. And we made our first payment last week to our investors. It wasn't big, we'll be honest, but um, at least we gave them something back. And then, and then onwards with the distribution as well, letting people screen it wherever they want, letting normal people uh, 
you know, uh, charge for tickets and keep the profits for themselves. So anybody can profit from our film, which is, uh, you know, if the film belonged to the BBC or Warner Brothers or somebody like that, uh, they most certainly would not be doing that. Anyway, back to Copenhagen. Yeah. So Tony, we're kind of assuming it's going to fail. We're not going to get a deal here as strong as the science uh, says we need. Yeah. Um, so what do you feel then that the citizens of the world, the people who rely on the atmosphere remaining habitable yeah. for human life, what do you think they should do? Um, I think there's, there's, there's probably three things to do. Right. Uh, thing number one is to join the 1010 <laughs> campaign. There's a little 1010 logo it's like here. I told you to say that, but Did I you didn't. Say that you, didn't, you didn't say to say it at all. <laughs> I'm just saying it because it's true. Yeah. Join the 1010 campaign. This is a source of personal agency yeah. in helping to cut emissions through what we can all do. Yeah. And I think, 10% you know, next year. 10% in 2010. 10% out of next year's emissions. Everyone signing up to that is going to create a nice kind of cultural dimension yeah. to the changes that have got to happen. Because it's not only about international politics, it's about how people live. And the more of us who sign up to that kind of thing, the more that's going to help. We had some great sign-ups last yeah. week. Uh, Sony yeah. and New Key Zoo. Oh, fantastic. Our zoo. Nice. Uh, so that's one thing. Yeah. I think the other Two. thing we've got to do is um, keep pressing for domestic action yeah. from companies and governments and yeah. local authorities. And, you know, look what's happened in the UK. It's incredible. We've got the Climate Change Act there. We've got loads of companies doing things, local authorities doing stuff, irrespective of what's going on here. We've got to do that everywhere in the world and keep that, keep that yeah. moving and push that further. And the third thing we've got to do is hold these people's feet to the fire next yeah. year yeah. and keep bringing them back until they do do what's wow. necessary. So, and it ain't going to be over until it's over. But what you're saying, though, is keep, with, keep the same political system, even though it's failed today. Well, I don't think we have a choice. Uh, yeah. You know, it, 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 it's taken 17 years yeah. to get this far with these negotiations, which some people may say, you know, is, is not far enough and they'd be right. But I think if you, if, if, if you take just time to think through the implications of closing this down yeah. and starting something else... Yeah. I mean, effectively. I meant the wider political system. Oh, uh, well, um, <laughs> well, I, well I, uh, this, this is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm standing for Parliament for yeah, the Green Party, right. is to bring some of these yeah, ideas yeah, into the good. mainstream there. Good, yeah. How about you, Tom? What do you think, what do you think we should do? Well, if it all goes well, to well, well, I think, well, I, do, I, I don't think it's strictly going to go pear shaped. I mean, I, I'm not walking out of G8 summit saying we have, a, you know, um, everything's wonderful. I don't think it's pear shaped because I think the difference is now. That um, governments are having to get their heads round to making commitments. Yeah. Whether it happens in the next 24 hours or not, that's where they're going to go. There's no going back. That's yeah. where they're going. Yeah. And it's dawning on them what the economic ramifications are for that. And they are that we have to build a global sustainable economy. There's, if we commit to this, then that's what that means. And that's like a massive yeah. shift that they're having to do. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not like justifying their, you know, all this ridiculous procedure bullshit that's been going on for two weeks at all. But like, if you st step out of the building and you look at it thinking, you know, like, this is a, m a mental thing we're trying to do here. <laughs> You know, and it's necessary, and, it, and I think it's going to happen, but it's going to be messy. Right. Yeah, because a clear, I completely agree with you. We are definitely moving in the right direction, especially now America's on board. Um, but we're not moving in the right direction no, fast but, enough. No, okay, but like, no it, but if if say Obama had got in um, three years previous, yeah. now this this whole negotiation would be somewhere else completely yeah. right now. Yeah. That's what you've got to bear in mind. Yeah, but we've also got to bear in mind that we've got to stabilise global emissions by 2015. Yeah, no, I know. I know. So we've only got five years left now mm. to stabilise. So we haven't got time yeah. to spend another year chatting or another And the Saudis are chatting. asking for money to bail them out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, Lost really revenue. Yeah, they really need it. <laughs> <laughs> How's that work? Yeah, quite. So you don't think we should um, dismantle the whole, smash the whole system as the... Uh, no, it's, it's ugly and it's obviously system. barely working, but it's the only, it's the only um, vehicle we have. <laughs> And um, thanks for the link to 1010, Tony. Sure. Tom, I was wondering whether you would care to sign up to 10 at 1010. All it means is that next year you have to cut 10% of your emissions. Oh, I can do that. You're personal. You could do it? Yeah, I guess so. It's I pretty easy, try. actually. How, how yeah, you reckon? Yeah, well, it depends how eco you are It depends how long you've been are. doing it, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, How are you going to do yours, Tony? Um, ooh, I think it's going to be a combination of um, heating, I think. Travel's my big one. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I've been trying to cut down on, on uh, the amount I'm moving around. Yeah. 
but like things like this, you know, take, you take a big hit on this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I'm, you know, working with the rainforest project with Prince Charles. Yeah. Uh, that's involved a fair bit of travelling yeah. too. But I think I can, I can easely cut ten percent. Not easily, because <laughs> I, I have been trying already. I, I've cut already compared to what I was doing at Friends of the Earth. Yeah. But I can probably do a little bit more there. But in terms of flights, um, I have to say, you know, we've got to, between us, cut about 90% of total yeah. flights. Yeah. But, you know, George Monbiot, every flight you take wipes off everything you've done that Pretty, pretty that much, year. exactly, so. yeah. Um, uh, however, um, do you have a standard calculator that you're using to help people get their 10%? We will do by 1st of January. Okay, great, good. As long good. as our web yeah. team works straight yeah. through Christmas. Yeah, because there's probably, the quite, a, there's probably there some quite surprising, <laughs> probably some quite surprising things that people yeah. um, would need to put in there, like dairy products yeah. and concrete oh, no, and sure cement, all that, that kind yeah. of stuff. Have you got exactly. any supermarkets to yeah. sign up? Have we got any supermarkets to sign up? Where is Dan? Have we got any supermarkets to sign up? Big part of the co-op. A big part of the really? car, but also a part, a section of Waitrose, the delivery part, a cardo. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Tesco and Sainsbury's that's, that's have That's that big hidden one, isn't it? The flying um, food around us. Yeah. Yeah, the, well, the food. And but we've got Microsoft, and Adidas, O2, Pret a Oh, yeah, baby. And a oh. hundred local councils, which between them provide the services to a quarter of, them, a quarter of the British population. So all of those people will be getting those same services, but 10% less emissions next year. Wow. You're going to have to sign up. There you go, Tom. Good yeah, luck. Yeah, right, Good yeah. luck with your yeah, I'm going to need it. <laughs> we'll work on it together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Thank us, Plain Pro. Um, and for bringing all these press with you, Tom. Um, yeah. yeah, I think you did, yeah. Um, you probably crashed our server. Um, has, he, has he crashed our server That's again? Enough. No, the server survived the oh, Tom effect. Any tweets? <laughs> they are, look, they're all tweeting behind you. But I'm. Uh, Dan, we're going to bring Dan out now.